to play a little game here with this unit circle, make it a little more flexible. Instead of just looking at sine of theta, we're going to uh, play around with the arc lengths a little bit. This is x and this is y, or we could call this the cosine of theta and the sine of theta, right? So just looking at this coordinate here at 30, what is the sine of theta equal to? Which one? It's the y, one half. So write one half for that. Now, what I'm going to do is something kind of interesting is I'm going to use this as a guide map to what I'm going to do. This is theta going from here to here. And then I'm going to add pi to it. I'm going to pi is half the circle. It's going to go straight across to here. There's pi. So I'm starting with theta to there, and then I'm adding pi, and that's going to end up down here. Now this coordinate is going to fit on my little box. If I were to make a little rectangle box, it would fit on there. That means it's the same point. Square root of 3 over 2, 1 half. But what's different about it? Both are negative. Okay. So now I have an x and I have a y. Which one is the cosine? Or which one is the sine? The y. So now it's not one half. What is it this time? Negative one half. So you could use that as like a proof, and you could use it as a formula, but it just makes sense, doesn't it, on here? So let's see how you did. For this first one, we go up theta again, but this time, instead of going positive pi, we're going to go negative pi, which, by the way, ends us in the exact same spot, right? So won't it just be equal to a negative one half? All right. How many got negative one half? It's the same spot, isn't it? Okay. How about for um, sine of pi minus theta? Now, this one's a little different. For this one, I'm going to make this a little bold here. You're going to start at pi, okay? And then you're going to go back theta, okay? So you're going to go back theta, and is that still going to be on my rectangle? Uh-huh. So that it's still the square root of 3 over 2, 1 half, and uh, this is negative, this is positive. So what's the sign going to be? One half again. All right, good. Now this one's a giveaway. You start at theta and then just do a loop and end up at the same place. So what's that one going to be? One half. So these seem, how many got the last two positive one half? Nice. So the last one is the tricky one. What we're going to do here is we're going to start at pi over 2. And then we're going to go back theta. Back theta. So this is going to be, instead of 30 here, this one's going to be 60. And what do you know about this coordinate compared to the 60? It's going to be reversed, right? 1 half square root of 3 over 2. So if this is x and this is y, the cosine of theta is 1 half. The sine of theta is going to be square root of 3 over 2 and positive. How many got all four, all of those right? Okay, good. For your assignment on day two, what I want you to do is I want you to use your unit circle that you drew and tell me when do you get sine of theta equal to 1 half? So go on your unit circle. When is the y equal to 1 half? Can you sh tell me what the arc lengths are? Tell me one on your unit circle. Zoe, do you have one? Pi over 6. OK. Pi over 6. That's one. Zoe, did you get the other one? Yeah, pi over Oh, that's perfect. And you just got it right off of there. So if you look at my little example here, you, you're looking where the y is 1 half. That happens at 5 pi over 6 and pi over 6.
Good. Okay, let's try the next one. Okay. Uh, cosine of theta is the squ negative square root of 3 over 2. So the cosine is the x. When is the x between 0 and 2 pi negative square root of 3 over 2? This seems like a silly activity, but it's used a lot in, the, in solving in the future. It's one of the ultimate skills. Did you get... 5 pi over 6, and what was this other one? Yeah, perfect. 7 pi over 6. So you'll do that for these. Sometimes you'll get one, sometimes you get two answers. Uh, this one shouldn't be too bad. Uh, you're going to do the sign thing, except you're going to have to make the, the little circle first. You're going to start with a circle. And we're going to be, it looks like we're in between 0 and pi over 2. That's quadrant 1. You make your triangle. And then once you have the triangle, I bet you could figure out sine is 2 thirds. I bet you could figure out what this is. And then make your, well, what is this going to be? Square root of what? Three squared is nine minus two squared is four. Nine minus four is five. There you go. So the x, now careful here, x isn't square root of five. This only is true if you have one. So I'm going to divide everything by three here so that now this radius is one. So what's the x for this one? Negative or square root of 5 over 3. What's the y going to be? 2 thirds. Okay. And then you do these as best you can. I think that'll be interesting. Uh, also, you'll use your unit circle for this one. A little bit of triangle work here, a little bit of calculator work, and then the 